Cheryl's learned that Joseph served with the Durham Light Infantry during World War I. He volunteered to join up soon after war broke out at the age of 33. Cheryl wants to know more about Joseph's service and has decided to follow in his footsteps. I find it like, pretty amazing that my mum's grandfather has been completely forgotten, considering he fought in the First World War. You would think there would be tales and stuff like that passed down, but nobody seems to know anything. A distant relative Cheryl doesn't know has sent a letter with some more information about Joseph. Dear relative, I am also a descendant of Joseph Wilson Ridley. He was my grandfather, married to my grandmother, Mary Ann. And they had eight or nine children together before she died in 1930. Joseph was never really discussed in our family, other than referenced in rather derogatory terms as old man Ridley. It seems after the death of my grandmother and Mrs. Burton was brought in as a housekeeper to look after the children, and then she fell pregnant with the twin girls. That's my great nana. Wow. It created quite a scandal in the community. A Ridley trait is that most of us have a quick temper, and from what I've been told, Grandad Ridley was no exception. Some in the family say he was troubled and volatile, and his temper would often be fueled by excessive drinking. But he also bore other Ridley traits, undying generosity, and was at times quite fearless. When his photograph surfaced, I felt a bit sorry that he seemed to have become sidelined and forgotten. There he was in a soldier's uniform, and he must have fought in World War I. Wow, that actually explains so much of why he was never talked about. So interesting. And he had, in the end, 11 children, which is what my mum said. And yeah, I mean, great nana must have been a young housekeeper that got involved with Mr. Old Man Ridley. When Cheryl's great-grandmother, Edith Annie Burton, had the twins in 1932, Joseph was a widower with a large family and a war veteran. To find out more about her great-grandfather's war experience, Cheryl's meeting military historian, Dr. Helen McCartney. In 1915, Joseph was sent to the Western Front where the British and their allies were fighting the Germans. By early 1916, Joseph's battalion was here, near Ypres in Belgium. Something I do know is that he joined the regiment in Durham, mm -hmm. um, but I have no idea what he did or, or anything else really other than that. He joins the 11th Battalion, and the 11th Battalion is quite interesting. It's a different kind of unit than, than he, he trained with. Right. It's a pioneer unit. And this is a badge that he would have worn. Wow. And what, what does that actually mean? This here is a pick. Yeah. And this one here down is here, a gun. Yeah, is a rifle. And that kind of sums up what the pioneers did. They were mainly a labour unit, but they were also trained as infantry. Right. So they were also soldiers. And that's what this represents, and labor right. and fame. That's right. Wow. When Joseph arrived on the Western Front, he joined a war that had reached stalemate. The flat, bare landscape of northern France and Belgium offered little cover, and both sides were forced to dig down for protection. The British Army realized they needed to build an extensive network of trenches so established specialist pioneer battalions like Joseph's. They were trained to fight, but also to dig. Joseph was expected to work throughout the night and in all weathers, 
often in open ground in sight of enemy snipers. If you have a look down here, yeah. you can see that they're actually quite narrow. Yeah, very narrow. And they're lined with these um, corrugated iron boards. And this is the kind of thing Joseph would have been making wow. and then putting in to shore up the sides of the trench because it's pretty wet round yeah. here and, and it gets um, very flooded. And so the, a lot of the trenches would fall in and so that he would have to keep digging out these trenches. That was why that was one of the main things that they were doing around here. It's very small, very, uh, considering they're quite, they would have been quite big men, I would think. How many men would there have been lined up in here? Working parties were anything between 50 and 150 men. Um, all in the tr all in this trench. All in the trenches, dig either digging them or digging them out, repairing them. So you can see that the trenches are, are kind of zigzagged. Part of the reason for this is if a shell falls in one section of the line, it doesn't reverberate along the rest, and so the unfortunate people Smart. in that yeah. uh, get affected by the shell, but not the rest of the line. Right. As well as digging trenches. Pioneers like Joseph had to build railways, roads and bridges to keep the British Army moving. For their skilled work, pioneers were paid an extra two pence a day on top of their infantry wages. And actually one of the reasons the 11th Battalion of the Durham Light Infantry turns into a pioneer battalion is because it's full of miners. And it's estimated right at the beginning, it's about 95% miners. Wow. Um, and that gives them a huge advantage because yeah. they've been used to hard physical labor. But Joseph isn't a miner, yeah. and he's a grocer. Yeah. And I want to show you a diary entry from later in the war, which shows you how some members of the battalion viewed people who, who didn't come from the same background as them. Have a look at this here. Okay. A draft of 52 men arrived only three of these men were suitable for pioneer battalion. Grocers, agents, musicians, etc., are not fitted for the hard work of pioneering. So that guy's not happy about people that are not miners or... That's, that's right. Joseph's going to have to work really, really, really hard to prove himself. You know, I always heard about trenches and, this, and how they were used, but I never really thought about how they were actually made and knowing that Joseph was um, part of the labour of that is a big deal of helping the soldiers survive. In July 1916, Joseph's battalion was ordered south towards the Somme in France, where a major offensive by the Allied army to break through German lines had already begun. The first day of battle had claimed more than 60,000 casualties. And by the time the fighting ended, months later, that number would rise to over one million. The Battle of the Somme would prove to be one of the most devastating campaigns of the war, and Joseph was heading straight into the middle of it. <laughs> 